Hello friends, this video on neat ray optics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 12. An object is 8 cm high. It is desired to form a real image 4 cm high at 60 cm from the mirror. The type of mirror needed with the focal length is. Okay, so first of all, let's try to understand the question. So that means with this mirror, we have to form a real image. So real image is possible only with concave mirror because convex mirror always gives us virtual erect diminished images. But here we want real image. So therefore the type of mirror will definitely be a concave mirror. Now we have to find out the focal length of this concave mirror. So what are the values which is given here? So here it says that the height of the object is 8 cm and the height of the image is 4 cm. Now since it is a uh, real image, so real images are always inverted. So if you also take into consideration the sign uh, for inverted image, it would be minus 4 cm, right? So we can calculate magnification height of image by height of object, which is equal to height of image by height of object, that is 1 by 2, or you can say minus 1 by 2. Right? So this would be the magnification. We also know that magnification is equal to minus V by U. So from this we can say V is equal to V is equal to U. So therefore U will be equal to 2 into V. Now what is the uh, image distance? So image distance is given as 60 centimeters. So this is the value of V. So 2 into 60 which is equal to 120 centimeters. So 120 centimeters is the object distance. So now we know the object distance. We also know the image distance. So now with this help we can find out the focal length. So we will make use of the mirror formula. And what is the mirror formula? It is 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to 1 by f. So therefore 1 by f is equal to 1 by u. So u will be minus 120 plus 1 by v, v will be minus 60. So this is equal to 120 minus 1 minus 2. That is equal to minus 3 by 120. Therefore f is equal to minus 120 by 3. So this is equal to minus 40. Centimeters. So the focal length will be minus 40 centimeters and the mirror would be a concave mirror. So C is the right option. Question number 14. A small angled prism of refractive index 1.4 is combined with another small angled prism of refractive index 1.6 to produce dispersion without deviation. So basically we have arranged two prisms like this. Let's say this is one prism. And this is another prism. So these are the two prisms which are arranged in such a way that there is no deviation. So if the angle of first prism is 6 degree. So the angle of the first prism is 6 degree. We have to find out the angle of the second prism. Okay. And we are also given the refractive index of these two prisms. Now what is happening here? So in this case... The desired effect is that dispersion should happen but without deviation. So what is the condition for dispersion without deviation? So we have already learned this in our theory that for dispersion without deviation A by A dash should be equal to mu dash minus 1 divided by mu minus 1. So this should be the relationship between angle of prisms and refractive index for dispersion without deviation. So in this problem, the value of A is given as 6 degree, A dash we have to find out, mu is given as 1.4 and mu dash is given as 1.6. So we can say A dash is equal to A into mu minus 1 divided by mu dash minus 1. So that is equal to 6 into 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.6 minus 1. So this is equal to 6 into 0.4 divided by 0.6. So this is equal to 4 degrees. So the correct option is C. Question number 15. 
Radii of curvature of a converging lens are in the ratio 1 is to 2. Its focal length is 6 cm and refractive index is 1.5. Then the radii of curvature are dash and dash respectively. Okay, so here we are talking about a converging lens that is a convex lens. Okay, so we will make use of the lens maker formula. So let us quickly write the lens makers formula. So it goes somewhat like this 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1, 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. Right now, when we look at a converging lens, this is how it looks like. So let's say r1 is the radius of curvature for this surface and r2 is the radius of curvature for this surface. Right. So in this case, what are the values? Now we do not know. We have to find out the values of r1 and r2. So let us say let r1 be equal to x and r2 will be how much? Because the radii of curvature are in the ratio 1 is to 2. So if r1 is x then r2 will be 2x. But in this case if you see if r1 is positive so r2 will be negative. So this will be negative. So now let's put values in this formula. Focal length is 6 cm. So 1 by 6 is equal to mu is 1.5 minus 1. 1 by x minus 1 by minus 2x. So this is equal to 1 by 6 is equal to 0.5 into 2 plus 1 divided by 2x. So 1 by 6 is equal to 0.5 into 3 by 2x. So from here we can say 2x is equal to 0.5 into 3 into 6 or x is equal to 0.5 into 3 into 6 divided by 2. So 2, 3 is a 6. This is equal to 4.5 centimeter. So x is equal to 4.5 centimeter. That means R1 is equal to 4.5 centimeter and R2 will be equal to 2 into 4.5 that is equal to 9 centimeter. So the correct option is D. Question number 16. A vessel consists of two plane mirrors at right angles as shown in the figure. So these are the two plane mirrors. The vessel is filled with water. So here we have water inside the vessel. The total deviation in incident ray is. Now here we have to remember the concept of deviation produced by plane mirrors. So we have learned that how, how do we find out deviation produced by two plane mirrors. So we have found that deviation produced by two plane mirrors is equal to delta is equal to 360 degree minus 2 theta where theta is the angle between the two mirrors. So in this case the two mirrors are at right angles to each other that means the value of theta is equal to 90 degree. So if we put this value so this is 2 into 90 that means 360 degree minus 180 degree which is equal to 180 degree. Right? So we can say that the total deviation in the incident ray is 180 degrees. So basically how will this incident ray move? So this incident ray touches this surface, undergoes reflection. Again touches this mirror, undergoes reflection. So if you look at the reflected ray and the incident ray, they are exactly in the opposite direction. So the angle between the incident ray and the reflected ray is 180 degrees. So D is the right option. Question number 17. The diameter of the eyeball of a normal eye is about 2.5 centimeters. The power of the eye lens varies from. Okay. So here let us draw a rough diagram. Let's say that this is the eye. So normally this is where the eye lens is located. So this is just a rough diagram. And this is the retina. So retina is that is like the screen. So this is the position where the image is formed. And let's say that you have an object here. So what happens? The ray of light from the object falls on this lens and then finally an image is formed on the retina. So the object is here and the image is here. Now what happens in case of normal vision? So if you talk about normal vision, in that case the near point is 25 centimeters and the far point is infinity. So that's for normal vision. Okay. So now here we have to find out the 
uh, power of the lens that means the range of the power of the lens so first we will talk about the power of the lens for the near point so in order to find out the power of the lens we will first have to find out the focal length of the lens so for near point let's apply the lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f so what is the value of v so the value of v in this case is basically that this distance which is nothing but the diameter of the eyeball right that that is this distance so v will be equal to 2.5 centimeter so we can write it as 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters this minus u the value of u would be minus 25 centimeters because the object is on this side so this would be minus 25 into 10 to the power minus 2 this is equal to 1 by f so this can be written as 1000 by 25 minus minus plus this is equal to 100 by 25 is equal to 1 by f so we can say that 25 into 40 25 into 4 so we can say 44 is equal to 1 by f so 1 by f is 44 so power is equal to 44 diopters right so for the near point the power of the lens should be 44 diopters now let us talk about the far point so for far point what will be again we will make use of the same lens formula but in this case what would be the value of v value of v will still remain the same because we can only see an object when the image of that object is formed on our retina so this would be 1 by 2.5 into 10 to the power minus 2 minus in this case u is infinity so this is equal to 1 by f so we can say that 1000 divided by 25 is equal to 1 by f so this is 40 so therefore power in this case is equal to 40 diopters therefore the power of the lens can vary from 44 diopter to 40 diopters this is option c thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.